Good afternoon, everybody, and we welcome all our guests, viewers, and experts to the special edition of the Ranepa TV show. Yeah, as we said, uh, today we have invited the world's most successful think tank, the Infinity, to help us discuss some crucial crucial problems concerning this world. Issues of migration, gun control. Uh, it's obvious that everybody knows that in this world we have met more than enough problems. But today, the expert team of Infinity will touch on two topics, the gun control and the migration issue. But before that, let's listen from the director of this organization, Lisa Minugulam. Good afternoon, dear investors and uh, esteemed members of the audience. We are glad to be here with you today. The reason why are we here is that our crew uh, has a successful, uh, successful experience in global, uh, in global issues and uh, yeah, I mean, tell us more about your own Infinity, the crew, what's, what's about it? Okay, uh, our organization is based on uh, well, different values such as... Uh, the values, I mean, the values... Yeah, the values is... Uh, Security, peace, equity, civil rights, freedom. But uh, as we know from your previous uh, success stories, you have very good record of, I think, 10 projects in three years. So how do you do that? How do you do that? Come on, tell us. Okay, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have uh, such various values, such as human life, uh, uh, then uh, equity, equality, and fraternity. Okay. Uh, Listen, I suggest to uh, even the audience who suggest that we should start talking about the main issues. About the main issues of today, your organization uh, want to touch on the migration and gun control, yeah? So let's uh, invite to the studio, but before we invite to the studio, of course these issues are very crucial. Let's take a look at this video. A child in the school having a personal shotgun. I mean, <laughs> even among this audience, I don't believe somebody is having a shotgun here. But uh, you know, since this is a conflict, we have to hear from the other side. Let us give the floor to our experts, Irina Papova and uh, Alfia Kalilulina. Uh, Irina is going to tell us about the scientific facts and figures related to this issue. Please, Irina. Hello everyone, I'm very glad to be here, so I'd like to tell you about this situation. So, there are three groups of people, and now I want to tell you about the first. The first group of people is a very aggressive group. These people are afraid of guns and weapons, but they can use it against other people. So, uh, it, it's very important because it's uh, necessary for them to feel safe. So we, if you can a weapon, uh, they uh, can, if they knew, if they knew that you have a weapon, uh, they uh, can use it against you. We think that it's a very dangerous group of people. So the second group is also dangerous because they 
can, cannot use weapons against other people, but they are afraid of guns too. And uh, these people, their lives are full of frustration. So the third group of people is a good group because they have a control. They can control themselves. And it's very important, but there are just 20% of people who can do it. So my professional opinion is simple. The, it's very dangerous to give people opportunity for using of using weapons for free. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, it's very important, of course. I mean, all of us here belong to the network. Yeah, we belong to the 20% that can use the gun or weapons properly. Uh, but you know, Irina, we have another point of view on this. Let's hear from the active citizen. What are your demands? Do you have any problem with that? Yes, we have. Uh, thanks for introducing me. Uh, guys, uh, please. Mm, everyone who wants a weapon can have a weapon, and it's a big problem. But for now, uh, we are faced criminals and murderers unaimed. And if we have a gun for self-protection, we can get more guarantees for our safety. Like in Switzerland, uh, they have well-built structure of uh, how you can get a gun, strict criteria, and uh, gun controlling agency. Also, sport shooting itself has become popular and even more national hob hobby. Uh, what can prove such a good results uh, of that policy? Of course, it's a good statistics. According to Swiss Federal Statistical Center, the percentage of crimes committed with guns has declined for about 30% after they implemented this system. In such countries as Bulgaria, Hungary, Germany, the positive cause and effect relationship is clear. I think that we should adopt this system to our country so we can save more lives than ever. And thank you very much, Alfia. But uh, we've uh, talked about the problems. So let's hear from the director. What are your solutions? And are there some risks involved in taking this solution? Okay. I mean, tell us more. An objective minor we had, have decided to propose government an implemented decision where uh, both sides will be satisfied. So uh, really it's a win win situation. Okay, okay. Uh, we decided to uh, not to ban legal uh, sale of weapons, but we'll register uh, firearms and put chips on them. Uh, also, we made uh, possession of multiply weapons uncomfortable by uh, paying $1,000 per year uh, for any additional weapon. Uh, another point, people have to uh, pass this special psychological test uh, for acquiring weapons. Um, so, we think that in long run, uh, we should to start with the little steps. So, uh, we created a special program for the young generation, for our children. We decided to give them uh, special video games, uh, special elections uh, in the schools for kids, and uh, advertisement for parents in the television and the social networks. Wow. So, but the main risk uh, in here is an increase of illegal gun traffic. Illegal gun trafficking. Yeah, of course, this is a major risk because. Uh, but uh, you talked about the video games. I mean, most of us here play some video games. Well, uh, that's great. Dear audience and viewers, the guests, the experts, uh, our think tank is not just about solving problems and issues and all these gun conflict stuff. Uh, we take into consideration our young generation. How? We look into the future, we bring about uh, some of the bright minds among the young generation, we create a commercial product for Coca-Cola. <laughs> this way we can teach and train the future generation about advertisement and marketing, which is, uh, I think, there are two important aspects of business. We shall be back after this commercial break. Take a look.
Coca-Cola. Yeah, thank you very much for being with us, and it's a great pleasure that uh, most of you are actually not sleeping. Uh, is anybody among the audience having something like Coca-Cola or something else? Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. Ah. <laughs> That's infinity. So, uh, let's dip back into the issues. As we can see uh, from the statistics, uh, and some of us have already said like 10% of the population consisting of migrants. And this issue is very crucial one because it's almost everywhere now that we have the refugees also increasing to detention. So based on these statistics, we can see that uh, most of these top destination countries are the USA, the Russian Federation, and Germany, meaning most of these migrants tend to go to countries like the USA. And on the other hand, the migrants are immigrating from countries of Mexico, India, etc. But the issue of uh, migration, as we said, is a very crucial one, so we have to be very strategic in solving these issues. How? Let us now hear from the experts. Barbara Benarikawa, Claudia Garcia, and Daria Pico. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your invitation. It's a great pleasure for me to be here. First, before I start, I would like to I would like to focus on the problem of migration. It's not a new phenomenon as people tend to resettle from the very beginning. According to many statistics and researches, uh, as for example, uh, Lewis' uh, theory of push and pull factors, uh, this theory explains uh, the motivators why migrants want to leave their country and why they want to enter a new country. We should focus on economic aspects first. Let's consider unskilled labor. This labor might fulfill a gap on a labor market. This labor is willing to work on a position that is unattractive for native citizens. On the other hand, there is skilled labor. This labor is vital for the economy as well. Skilled labor receives their education in their mother country, what means that all the expenditures and costs are bared by the mother country. Therefore, this is very beneficial for the host country. Then let's focus on foreign direct investments. Foreign direct investments rule the world nowadays. Well, these investors are usually seeking for labor, skilled and cheap labor. This labor uh, attracts them. Okay, uh, now uh, let's consider other economic factors. Migrants demand on products and goods. Then it means that purchase power of the economy is increasing. Now let's, uh, I would like to draw your attention on this easel, on this uh, simple table. Migrants, they create healthy competition. What impact the overall productivity? This productivity impacts the output of the eco economy as a whole and all in all results in economic growth. Then, uh, let's move to social aspects of uh, migration. Migration, um, nowadays, we have got a trend where, on the one hand, there is a significant decrease in population. On the other hand, there is aging population. Do you see 
balance between these two groups? No. no. And we need to find equilibrium between these two groups. However, migrants, they do pay taxes. And we need someone who will, we need to find someone who will pay taxes and somehow make these groups equal. Because when we don't have migrants, we need to increase taxes. And no one wants to increase taxes. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you you are talking about the migration issue. And for every problem, we have a solution. As uh, Mahatma Gandhi stated that there is no way to peace, but the peace is the way. But we have another point of view from the active citizen. Claudia, please, can you tell us your demands? Yeah, um, I just wanted to say thank you, Barbara, for your <coughs> participation here. But I think now we should be realistic, okay? Our country has become the dumping ground for everybody's problems. How would you feel if someone came from another country and stole your jobs? How would you feel if all your culture, your values, your knowledge were disappearing? Listen, I have nothing against migrants, but I think that if we have a huge employment in our country, we can't allow the immigrants to come and steal the jobs that our citizens need in order to make our country big again. Okay? Mm. And trust me, I, like, I have a lot of friends that are migrants, but I know, and you know, that they are not good for our country. Because when other countries send their people to our country, they are not sending their best. They are sending, they are not sending you. They are not sending you either. They are sending people that have lots of problems and they are bringing them to us. And they are sending crime, they are sending drugs, they are sending violence, and some I presume they are good people. But let me just say that I have very good connection with policemen that are in our borders, and they are not just good, and they know they are the best person that know what kind of people are coming to our country. And they also think that we need to stop them. So this has to be solved, and this has to be solved fast. Thank you very much, Claudia. Lisa, please tell us about the solutions. Yeah. Well, we offered uh, comprehensive solutions for this issue. Let's listen uh, of our psychologists of uh, our organization. Please, Daria Sinko. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Now I would like to tell you about the solution of that problem. And as the problem is very global, uh, we are sure that the solution should uh, contain many aspects, many components. So now you see four components we choose uh, to solve this the, the problem. And let's start from the first one. Uh, legislative component means uh, that we should uh, care about uh, policy of immigrants. Uh, and uh, you see that organizational component uh, is very important too because we have two conceptions. First one, when an immigrant, my, and my, um, my, sorry, migrant comes to a country, he should be asked whether he wants to work or to get education and to work. And uh, uh, some companies should help them to find a job. Uh, the uh, final result should be 70 or 75 percent of people who find a job uh, in our country. You, of course, uh, you can say it's impossible. Yeah, the economical crisis and different problems cannot allow us to uh, get immigrants uh, for, from other countries. But we found the solution. Look at the. Uh, Point uh, two, economical component. We are going to find investors. Uh, what, will we do, what will we do with them? Um, uh, we hope that our program, program will be interesting for them. We are going to organize some startups, some businesses, and build factories and manufacturers. Uh, it will lead to increase of working places. And as a result, we can get job to many people, no matter are they migrants or citizens of uh, 
the, I mean native citizens. Yes, and there is one more point, it's a social component. And to be honest, we believe that nowadays it is very important that every people, every person, no matter is he a foreign, uh, foreign citizen, he yeah, is from another country or a native one, they both should have houses, should have an opportunity to get education, should uh, get to get opportunity, should have opportunity to care about uh, their health, and uh, the only thing that make it possible is to find a legal job and pay taxes. So yeah, I mean, most of us here are even uh, migrants also. So Lisa, please, can you conclude uh, your position on this matter? Oh, sorry, sorry. You know, I'd like also to tell about some risk, of course. Uh, I think all of you knows that risks. Uh, is a normal uh, for different solutions and as for our solution uh, there can be such risks like the growth of um uh, unemployment, uh, um, unemployment, uh, corruption. Uh, but I hope that if we will focus on all these uh, com uh, components, yes, yeah, see, legislative, economical, organizational, and social, uh, we will improve all the spheres of life, and uh, we all in our country will have, uh, will live all together in peace. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we live all together in peace. Listen, your conclusion, please. Today, uh, we offered. Um, conclusions for very complex issues. We hope that presented uh, projects will be successful as well as our previous decisions. Yeah. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, experts, Vincent and Patrick, for saying we to the main of the special episode of the Raneva TV show. See you next year. Peace out. Infinity! Every time I see these guys